In this video, we're gonna have a look at a way to bring NDI network audio and video into your Blackmagic ATEM Mini, Mini Pro, or any ATEM workflow that uses HDMI or SDI. I've been looking for an efficient way to bring NDI audio and video into my ATEM workflow and connecting it to the HDMI or SDI connections on the back of my ATEM. Typically, NDI is a uh, network-based protocol. So I've been using things like OBS to bring Skype NDI into OBS and then stream it out from there, and it works pretty well. But I really miss the reliability and the switching functionality of the ATEM and the ability to use my hardware encoder versus the software encoder in OBS. And I think I might have found a solution. This is the Bird Dog Studio NDI, SDI and HDMI encoder and decoder. And it's kind of a Swiss Army knife of encoding and decoding for NDI. Let me explain that a little bit. It will take either an SDI or an HDMI input and will encode that into NDI and send it out over the network stream. It will also take a network NDI stream and decode it and send it out over the SDI or the HDMI port. So it's a cross converter that kind of does two functions. I wanted to see if I could take this device and take my Skype NDI network uh, calls and then convert them to HDMI and SDI and pipe those into my A10 mini. Uh, and so I could switch between both my analog camera sources and my network video sources. Starting with the build quality, this is a very, very solid device. It's made of a machine grade aluminum, nicely put together, some solid screws. It feels very robust. Uh, on the back, you've got a 3G SDI output and a 3G SDI input, an HDMI output, an HDMI input, gigabit ethernet with power over ethernet so you can power it. And as well, uh, on the bottom, there's a quarter 20 and a USB for firmware upgrades. And on the other side, there's another quarter 20 and this is your power connector, your DC power connector, and it accepts anywhere between five and 18 volts. Definitely made for professional use. It feels professional. All the connections are professional, nice and solid. On the front, it has a headphone jack and you can use the headphone jack for monitoring audio. And it also has a bright LED display here, which among other things will give you tally, but will also tell you the camera source. This is a network-based device. So all the software you need for the device is actually on the device. And once it's connected to your network, you simply log into the device using a web browser and you can configure it from there. So let's have a look at that. Once you've logged in, you're presented with the dashboard and the dashboard gives you a status of what's going on in your network and the IP address that that device has been assigned, as well as what's going on with the video sources. And you can reboot the device or just restart the video from here. Under the network tab, this is where you can set up your network. Either run it off DHCP where the network can assign it an IP address, or you can set it up for static IP address as well. The system tab gives you access to password settings, system updates if you're doing firmware updates, or configuration updates if you want to save your configuration files and reload them, as well as your network status. Now, this is a tab that I had to play around with a little bit to get my particular use case to work. Uh, in default, I left it at TCP IP as the network preference, uh, protocol preference, both on the send and the receive. I turned off network discovery server, which had been turned on for some reason, and then I just clicked apply in the settings. But the AV setup is where the magic happens. This is where you would control, uh, set up your inputs, uh, if you were using HDMI or SDI inputs, and, or you wanted it to select these automatically as well as your color space and things like the gain on the audio jack. And in addition to the inputs, you can basically set the same things up for the outputs, including the resolution you want to um, decode in and tally lights um, and what you want the audio jack output to be, whether you want it to use the audio from the, the uh, source itself or you can use it to send out basically um, comms data. So if you use their comms light software uh, and you have these connected to the camera, you can use these as comms device as well. 
Now, this is where um, I had to do most of my setup. And at first, it was a little bit challenging to get this to work properly. The idea is that you select the NDI source that's on your network that you want to use as video. So in my case, I have an iPhone running right now, which is running Skype, connected to a Mac laptop, which is connected to the network. And uh, NDI is turned on in Skype so that it's sending out an NDI feed. So I've selected my uh, remote participant, uh, Skype call, as the source. And then I've clicked apply to apply that. Once you have things uh, set up in the software, it's pretty straightforward to connect the device to your HDMI or SDI output and then connect it to your ATEM to bring in your video and audio. But this is where things kind of went off the rails for me a little bit. The BirdDoc Studio was actually able to bring in the video beautifully. And so this is an example of the video. Right now I have my iPhone connected uh, to my network just over Wi-Fi and it's uh, sending video and audio to my laptop over Skype. And the laptop is using the NDI connection to send this out. So this is entirely Skype video that you're seeing right now. Um, but the problem is the audio. When I was using NDI on OBS, uh, I had no issues with audio. There's some magic that um, Skype does with the NewTek NDI plugin to just look after things like audio and video resolution automatically. So I didn't have to mess around with it too much. And this is where things kind of went a little bit haywire for me. It did a great job on the video and the video came in crystal clear, worked really well. In fact, you're seeing the video now from my iPhone. Where I had issues though was with the audio. Skype uses 16 kilohertz as the sample rate for the audio, which is a pretty strange um, sample rate, but most devices seem to just adapt to that sample rate. So when I was using the NDI tools inside OBS, I really didn't experience any issues. The BirdDog Studio device uses a fixed 4800 kilohertz. So if the incoming sample rate isn't 4800 kilohertz, it doesn't, it can't handle it. When I first connected it, I was using a different NDI source that was at 44.1, and I sounded like Alvin from the Chipmunks. I was like, what the heck is going on here? And then when I brought in the NDI source from Skype, it was horrible. It was, I'll play you a sample uh, right now. That was a bit of a setback. I really wanted to be able to use this device to um, bring in, like to simplify the audio and video workflow uh, considerably. And that gave me an idea. I thought, well, what if I just took the audio output from Skype and sent it into my audio mixer separately from my video and then I just use the bird dog for video, which is exactly what I'm doing here. Um, now, right now you're listening to me over the microphone uh, that I have up here. Um, even when I switch to the NDI camera, you're still hearing that video. So I, I might be a little bit out of sync, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to um, bring up the um, fader on my mixer to bring in the audio, audio from, from Skype, Skype. and you, you, you might be might getting, getting a bit of an echo, echo right now because it might be coming out of two places. I'm going to bring down the audio. There, I brought down the audio from my microphone. Now, the camera's over there and it's just, it's the built-in microphone on uh, the iPhone. So the audio probably sounds a little bit terrible, but I think for anyone who's coming in remotely, uh, if they're using a microphone, a USB microphone, or the, even a computer microphone, it's going to sound pretty respectable. I haven't set any audio delay. I haven't tried to time this at all. This is basically zero delay on the audio coming out of my laptop and going into my mixer, along with the video that's coming out of the laptop over NDI to the bird dog being decoded and then from the bird dog into my A10. So that's the setup. I'm gonna just switch back to the audio from um, my microphone. I'm just, I'm just gonna, gonna bring, bring up that, that level. level. Uh, in this case, I'm using the A10 mini and I'm bringing the camera feed in uh, on input one. Input two, here I have selected for, um, this is the bird dog unit, which is coming in over HDMI. Camera three, or input three is my uh, laptop. I don't know what I have four on. Oh, four is my overhead camera, that's right. So there again, there's a shot of the bird dog. I wanted to just very quickly diagram out to um, what that setup looks like. 
So starting at the top here, we have our computer. And that's receiving the Skype call from my iPhone, and that's just going over Wi-Fi. The computer is actually routing audio using Dante. I love Dante, it's a great, uh, it's a great protocol. And that's like going into my mixer over Dante as well. So pop this mixer. And then actually from the mixer, I'm sending a mixed return back to Skype so that Skype participants can hear their Skype conversation but don't get any echo back from the room here. So it's a mix minus that's going back to the computer. Also from the computer, because it's connected to a network, I have a network hub here. And then of course from the network, I have the bird dog. And actually I'm gonna be using two bird dogs because I wanna be able to have kinda of two callers <laughs> call them on the line at the same time. Um, and so the bird dog then is feeding out into my ATEM and then the ATEM. I have a camera that's also feeding into the ATEM and another computer feeding into the ATEM. So those are my inputs. Oh, I actually have another camera, which is my overhead camera. It's feeding into the ATEM as well. The ATEM is actually sending HDMI out to a monitor and a recorder. The mixer audio is also being sent out, mixed and sent out over as re camera return audio into my main camera. And that's just being sent out over XLR. So this allows me to fully control the mix here. And I can mix both the sources from Skype as well as my own microphone sources here, which is what I just demonstrated. It seems like a very convoluted setup, but it actually is a great little setup. And I'm really happy with it. Uh, like I said, originally I was hoping I could get both the audio and the uh, video from the bird dog. Um, but that actually wouldn't have given me as much flexibility as I have now being able to mix it within the mixer and have more control over it. In fact, coming directly into the ATEM from a source, I would have had to switch on and off those sources as I, as I needed. And I can actually control all that from the mixer control right now. So that's my setup. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, I found that the bird dog was a great solution for bringing network video uh, into my analog uh, video workflow to connect up to my ATEM Mini. You could connect it up to the ATEM Mini Pro. You could connect it up to the ATEM Studio HD, basically any analog switcher. It's a great way to bring um, network video into that analog world. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving a thumbs up. I'm gonna be doing more videos like this, so uh, if you wanna get notification when I do the next one, please consider hitting the subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next video.